Hello everyone, welcome back to Lawrence Plays for some more Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. And I, I'm afraid I'm still out on Agnea and trying to get everything finished off here. Although I do plan to leave this planet in the next stream, so uh, fingers crossed that'll be, the, that'll be the case. So one of the big things I've been working on out here that was a bit of a surprise that I didn't realise was going to be quite such an issue was disposal of the stone. So in the last stream, it was brought to my oh, sorry in the last uh, video, it was brought to my attention that I had lots and lots of stone um, built up in in this chest in this warehouse over here. So we've got the two the two big vulcanite processing areas over here, and one and this one has been dumping stone into this chest, and there wasn't anywhere for the stone to go. So I put in a belt that came out down here, round across here, and led up into the other one, and then in, almost immediately. This uh, this warehouse then clogged up and got very very full and and, and the whole system stopped working because we couldn't put any crushed vulcanite in the top here, and this one was broken because we couldn't put any crushed vulcanite in the top here. So both of them were sent. There were there were problems on both sides essentially is what I'm trying to say here, and the system didn't work quite as nicely as it should. So I went through and I. Well, it turned out that basically the rate we were getting rid of the sand down here was completely woefully inadequate because over here. Tristan has stopped requesting sand to be delivered to Njord because he's dealing with um, expansion at the moment, so he's not using it up at the rate he should be. And so, after lots and lots of fiddling around and going, oh, can I get rid of the sand some other way, anything like that, and discovering that basically the, the amount that was coming in was still far too much, far too much stone to deal with, um, I ended up putting in a second pulverizer up here and running the sand across the top here and putting all of these furnaces across here to cook the sand down into glass. And as you can see, we're not, we're still not shipping anything out to a Njord from this one. But at this point, we've managed to get through all of the excess sand that's been built up and start feeding it, and then by feeding it through into all of these uh, furnaces up here and then down into additionally a second um, delivery cannon because it was just wasn't charging quickly enough. At its absolute peak, I think we had both of these running almost flat out, shipping the uh, shipping the glass out out to Norvis, just desperately trying to get rid of it all because there was there was so much of it. However, that did work. We've managed to get through get to the, through to through it to the point that well, there's most of the stone has gone from this uh, storehouse, and all of the stone had gone from both of these two warehouses until I artificially topped them up at the beginning of the stream, just so you could see the amount that was going to be flowing through them. So that is a blatant cheat, but. It, de it, demonstrate, it demonstrates the point I was getting at, so I just chucked an inventory's load of, into each one to get, to get them flowing and to get both of these crushes going. In order to keep things nicely balanced and stop any, other, any of the infrastructure failing, I put in a few, um, select, few uh, circuit conditions. So for example, this one is only loading when there's less than 2,000 stone in here, which we're nearly down to actually, it's, it's 2,300 at the moment. So when we use another, three, another couple of hundred stone out of here, we will then allow this to flow in here and keep it, tapped, keep it uh, stocked up and, and, also, and therefore start emptying the stone out from this end. Um, and generally when, when, the, boat, when the, uh, the system is running, the, the, it is quite capable of keeping that at that. That is quite capable of, keep, of, of keeping the other, of, other warehouse empty. And also up here, I put a condition in here, so it says only run this one if there's more than a thousand stone in here. So if this is, if, when this drops below a thousand and we're, and we're able to keep up easily, then we drop down to only using one of the uh, pulverizers. And that's because this belt round the top goes all the way across here, down here, and across here. Um, only feeds these furnaces, the ones that are taking the glass away to Norvis, and that's essentially that's an emergency overflow. So in theory, I want to be sending all of the sand off to Njord, and possibly later on off to Bigrid as well, which is the Vitamalange planet that isn't, isn't isn't actually up and running properly yet. But maybe in the future I'll be sending some over there. So yes, I want to be I want to use those as the primary place. But when this when the system overloads and we can't get and, and we've got too much stone up here, more than we know what to do with, then having this as an emergency overflow is very useful because it allows me to just get rid of as much sand as, as I want via uh, via sending it out as glass. So yes, that's um, that is working. I've, I've done lots and lots of upgrading in here to make things run as fast as possible. Like I've got another um, bypass over here that will pump this pump the sand around here, so we can get a full blue belt of it going up here to go into in, into all these machines up here, uh, and then an additional red belt coming along here. I ran out of red belts quite severely while I was doing all of this, which is why so much of this area has been replaced with with underground belts because I had loads and loads of underground belts, but very very few actual red belts themselves. And so, that has dealt quite nicely with the ridiculous quantities of stone I had. As you can see, this one's now flowing 
reasonably well. It's not flowing solidly, but it's it's, it's going it's going on and off, and and that's allowing us to pump out, pump the pump the pump it out, and reduce the amount of stone over here on on this side as well. So that's working nicely. The other big clog that I had that I wanted to deal with was was train jams. So I'll um, zoom out a bit further to the, to the map mode for this. So previously I had all of my pick all my um, core drop trains will come around here come down there was a curve in the rail here so they come down here into the station and then attempt to uh, drop off the, uh, an attempt to go to the station here and so I had two choices here the first one uh, which I used initially was not to worry about it just let the trains run and see what happened and of course what happened there was the trains would come along here we get two core trains trying to go in at the same time the whole thing would jam up then an oil drop train would drop would join in on the back and then a vulcanite train would come in over here and the whole thing would just break and it would be, be a horrible nightmare until finally one of these stations woke up and a train was able to go out to them and uh, I sort it all out. Uh, the other alternative would be to set a, uh, a a train limit on this station, like I've done here, and that's fine. Except it means that you can only ever have one train trying to get to this station at a time. So if you have, uh, you could that sort of works with two trains because when this one's on its way out, another train could be on its way back in from somewhere else, and you get a reasonable level of throughput from that. But I needed I needed more throughput than that. I needed the trains to come through a bit quicker, and I needed to have more than two trains in order to keep up. So what I've done is I've got these other I've got this waiting area up here which is called core wait. And <clears throat> all of these are presumably set up yeah all these are set up with a train limit of 1. And the idea is that the all of the trains will go off to a, a core pickup then they'll go to core wait and they'll wait there until the vulcanite core drop station is, is empty and available. And then one of the trains will leave head down here go into the station down here and unload. Now it does mean there's a load of trains set up here with core chunks in their inventory. Um, and they're unable to unload down here because this, because there's a train in the way. But this is one of those problems that isn't a throughput problem. It's only a latency problem. So we're going to get still get the same number of core fragments through as we would in any um, if, if, as we would if we had the waiting happen after this station. Um, it just means that the, the uh, trains are waiting up here. Um, maybe I should have had the core wait afterwards. I but then I, but no, it needs to be beforehand so that the trains are waiting here as close as possible to this station, <clears throat> so that when there is high demand. The trains can, this, as soon as this train leaves, there's another one on its way in almost immediately. The ideal would be to have two, two or three or four trains queued up in a row along here, but there wasn't room for this uh, railway to go in because I didn't plan far enough ahead because apparently planning is not one of my strong suits. So this system does work. It works very nicely. I did run into a slight problem though, um, and that was I've been using the, the simple way of wiring these stations up, which is where you watch the amount of stuff that's in the station, and then you enable or disable the station depending on how much there is. So when there's enough stuff in the station, it enables the station, a train can head out there. The problem is, if you don't set a train limit on it, then two trains try to head out there at the same time, and that causes problems. So you end up with two trains trying to go out, out to the station. Uh, sorry, one train leaves to go out to the station, and another one goes, aha, there is this, this station's open, it doesn't have a train limit, I'll go as well. So I had to rattle around all the stations setting train limits on them. That wasn't too bad, it only took a couple of minutes, because there's only about 15 of them at the moment. <clears throat> The other problem is that when you have, if, if you, uh, and that sort of works, that worked to an extent when I didn't have the core wait station. So then they go to core drop, they'd wait there until there was a Vulcanite core pickup station available, then they go off to it, and that worked fine. The other problem, though, that, um, once I put, once I had uh, the core wait station in there, is if you disable a station, then the trains ignore it in their itinerary. So what was happening here was the, the core pickup stations were all disabled. So the train would go from core drop to core wait to core drop to core wait. So they just go round and round in this loop until finally that one was available. When they then go off to get, one of them would then go off to go and get it. And that was obviously a complete nonsense because we had lots of empty trains just rattling round and round in circles, wasting fuel and clogging up the train system. The fix for that, which is um, interesting, is to put in an additional station here with a train limit of zero, but with the same name. So this is also called Vulcanite Core Pickup. So a train should never ever go to this station because it'll always have a train limit of zero. But because there is a train limit somewhere, there is a station somewhere on the network with a with a, with a, that, that isn't disabled, then all of the trains in here are happy to wait for the. Uh, train limit on this station to go up to one or more and then head head over to it so they're all waiting in here which is why we're getting this destination full on that one or more more accurately we'll be getting destination full on this one down here like that so that's now working nicely. It solved all of the train jam problems. It's got the trains to behave themselves, and it gives us a decent amount of throughput. And so, as soon as one of, the, as soon as any one of these stations 
gets up to having the 6,000 um, ore available that we, uh, core chunks available that we need, then this train will immediately leave, and another one will drop in to empty its load and be ready to go off to the next to the to the next one that, that that's ready. And so that's got means I've got a bit more throughput here. As you can see, it's still not quite enough. We're still down to almost no uh, core chunks available along here, which is not ideal but we're doing as well as we can without more core mining stations around the map and they're getting to the point it's, it's a bit fiddly to put more in so I'm, I'm getting a bit lazy especially it doesn't make enormously good streaming content so I've been resisting putting in too many more of those and because we are actually producing enough vulcanite at the moment I believe so yes we don't have any backlogs forming but we are still shipping it off to Norvis in massive massive quantities but I believe that it's um we're, we're producing it faster than the stuff that like, vitally needs it, even if we're not producing it as fast as the stuff that sort of could just just generally could do with it needs it. So yes, um, I do notice there seems to be a massive shortage of crushed vulcanite coming along here. I think that's just because we ran out of um, yeah we keep running out of core chunks like this, and so that's that when that happens we have almost nothing coming in on the input, so we have nothing coming out on the output. Over here, things are a bit healthier. I've also put in an additional breakout um, belt here. So we've got two belts carrying the um, carrying the, the enriched vulcanite over to put it onto here. So one puts it on right up here, right at the beginning, and loads it up as fast as possible. Then the other one brings it down here and loads it on down here. We also seem to have a shortage of crushed vulcanite coming in over here as well. And I'm not entirely sure why, because I don't think the numbers have changed. Although we do seem to have slight we do seem to have a little bit of a shortage of the uh, of the um, crushed vulcanite coming in no the vulcanite ore coming in at the top here as in as you can tell by this gap here so maybe it's due maybe it's due to us churning through it as fast as we can um, we can deal with it uh, i did have the same a similar problem with this one so down here we've got there we go the train's filled up that means the other one will now be ready to head out maybe i need to start putting loaders in here to fill the trains up a bit quicker um, or maybe i need a third train on this route I also had to tell these trains to go to the core weight station on their on their uh, travels because otherwise you end up with one state one train at Vulcanite pickup, the other tra train at Vulcanite drop. They've both got train limits of one on the stations, so one train can't leave until the other one leaves, and the other one can't leave until the one train leaves. So they end up just jammed completely, and and, and that's bad as you can probably imagine. So this is this is now a, a nicely nicely um, sorted out. So this is hang on, it's emptying really really quickly over here. That's looking looking at the um, yeah that's emptied already. Is it just the amount of time it takes for this to the train to get down here and then it loads up just as quickly? Um, yeah, it probably is. Okay, so we've got the trains shuttling backwards and forwards reasonably quickly. I don't think putting in an additional train will actually help at all there, unless I put in another waiting point down here and have them have them wait at the bottom. I could do that. That might be might be might be worthwhile. But at the moment, the system is mostly keeping up, and as I say, we've probably got enough uh, Vulcanite coming through at the moment. One of the things I did to keep me amused and keep keep the uh, stream uh, audience amused while I was building up the train system was putting in these wiggly rails, which are they're they're, they're a ridiculous idea. They were a big, they they came about as I said in the last video because of a throwaway comment I made about saying that putting down corners is quicker than putting down an equivalent number of straight pieces because all of that gets put down by a bot at once. Um, and so it'd be quicker to have a, 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 tr a track that does this all the way across, or quicker to lay a track that does this all the way across, rather than go down putting the pieces in, in, in individually by bot. Um, so then somebody decided, uh, Tristan decided to make a blueprint for it, and chat rather strongly encouraged me to put it in. Uh, it then got even worse because there was a further encouragement to make one that was a little bit less um, neat. So we now have this version over here where the two sides aren't actually lined up with each other, and this is truly horrible. However, the most impressive thing about this, I think, is that despite being truly horrible, it still matches up perfectly with the all of the um, the nice, neat uh, f fitting to uh, fitting fitting to the chunk-based uh, rail systems that we, we already have. So if I look in here at the rails, then we're in, the, in the basic, we've got what the one that's called Lawrence Rail, which seems a little bit mean, um, but we can put that as you see that that that, that has the uh, when you fit it fit it to chunks like this it fits in perfectly and just aligns itself with the with the uh, the rail there and so it's it is horrible but it's quite an impressively done horrible so we're sort of i don't know we're sort of impressed with it sort of not i i i, I don't know <laughs> I've also set up uh, what's it what's it called um, immersite mining as well because uh, that's something that was is currently being shipped over by Tristan from Njord to Taishakuten in order to be processed in, through all of the other immersite stuff and that was the stuff I was things I was talking about last week where the, the where you can't do the processing stage even though it produces a load of very very useful sand because it produces something that can't be put in a delivery cannon so maybe that means Tristan should be doing all of the um, immersite processing on uh, on uh, Njord in order to keep the sand in that place. 
Uh, but on the flip side, he then would have a load of sulfur that he wouldn't know what to do with. Whereas on Taishikutan, the sulfur can be used up for vulcanite processing. So, I, I don't know. They, they could, I can see that going either way. But we had I had some nice uh, immersite patches on here, so I slapped some quarry drills down on them. We're collecting all of that in the station, and then bringing it up to another immersite drop station here. And this one, uh, as you can see, this was put in slightly. Le this is a newer station, so I've been able to use the uh, the loaders going directly out of the trains. This has only become possible in the most recent uh, update for Factorio, so uh, that's why all of the other stations are using inserters. Possibly some of these should be um, upgraded to uh, allow for faster unloading. Uh, but I think in general, the loading and unloading speeds are not the limiting factors here. With, particularly with the uh, with the core chunks, the limiting factor is how fast we can pull stuff out of the ground, not how fast we can pull it out of the trains. Anyway, so this is, yes, unloading from here. I decided with this particular one, it wasn't worth having any sort of buffers in there. It could just go straight onto a belt, and that belt could go straight into a delivery cannon and be shipped out. And as you can see, we, we don't have any particular shortage here. Uh, this, this, this cannon will be firing at, at uh, Taishikutan as and when it's required, but at the moment, as you can see, we've got a certain amount in there already. We also want to tweak the priorities a little bit, so the stuff coming from Njord is prioritised over the stuff coming from here, from here from On Agnea, but that's something we can do in the next stream. I've also, speaking of other planets, I've also started shipping out Vulcanite to Talos, I believe it is. Yes, here we go. And here we are probably going to start shipping out Vulcanite. This, this, I don't know where this one's for. This is probably for, um, for Mark's planet, um, a Bridget. It's going to be doing the vitamin launch processing, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. And then almost finally on this planet, I had a bit of a, uh, a calamity. When I, shall, I shall show you what I shall show you the stream That's footage of what happened here. Um, I'm just going to try and see. Oh no! What was that? Oh. Oh no. <laughs> He's nuked his own base. I have indeed nuked my own base. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not even sure why I had nukes selected. Oh Ended no. Chat, everyone. <laughs> oh jeez. I managed to accidentally nuke the middle of my own base, which was extremely embarrassing and destroyed quite a lot of very useful stuff. Uh, <laughs> basically, I, I, I was using... Sh uh, we, we've got the um, even distribution mod installed, and with that you can use Shift-C to unload your inventory, any, any 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 consumables from your inventory into any machines within your dropping range, uh, which will take them. And as you can imagine, com combined with long reach, that's really quite powerful. So it allows you to scatter all of the stuff, all of the random nonsense you picked up while you've been going around picking things up, out of your inventory into all the machines around you. Very very handy. Unfortunately, if you sort of, if your finger sort of comes off the shift key while you're doing that, and you just press C, then that launches, then that fires whatever weapon you've got in your hand. In this case, it was the, uh, the atomic bomb launcher, and I blew up a big chunk of the middle of the base, as you can see. Uh, fortunately, I was able to rebuild all of that with, uh, with the stuff that was already on this planet. The only, uh, only slight difficulties were belts, and which is one of the reasons why I've got all of these underground belts here to reclaim some red belts. And a number of the loaders, where I've had to upgrade some of these to red ones instead of, instead of yellow ones. All the rest of it, thankfully, um, was, was stuff I, I had available for the, for the rebuild, but I did feel very, very silly from doing that. And actually, finally... Speaking of me feeling a little bit silly, I started planning for my uh, my escape from this planet. So if I fly over here, we've got we've got a rocket capsule up here, which I'm planning to use. This will this will take me back up to orbit, and if we have a quick look in orbit, we can see that the spaceship is up there waiting patiently for me to go back out there, and I can use that to fly back to uh, to wherever I want to go next, which is great. Uh, so I was going to use one of these capsules to launch me up there. Now, as you can see, I, I so I went in here and I went, okay, so when I've got cargo capacity of 20, so I can't take more than 20 stacks of miscellaneous stuff with me. So I was having a look through to decide what was valuable and what wasn't. I've, as you can see here, I've unloaded nearly all of the uh, the worthless stuff back into the uh, into the warehouses to just leave on this planet so it can be used for future buildings. Um, <clears throat> but then, and, and then I discovered I didn't have enough fuel. So I then borrowed, uh, I put down this... Um, atmospheric condenser to get me some oxygen and then borrowed this fuel refinery to slap it down over here to turn the pyroflux and the oxygen into rocket fuel. So I built up a decent amount of rocket fuel. Then I came down here and went, oh hang on, there's another capsule over here. Looked in this one and there was enough fuel in here that I would have had enough to go into orbit anyway. And then once I dumped my inventory it turned out I didn't need quite as much fuel as I had as I thought I did. So a bit of a double silly there, um, but never mind, it means there's a bit of spare rocket fuel here. The other other thing is that all this time when I, while I've been on this planet and flying merrily around with the uh, with the jetpack, I could have downgraded to use the processed fuel instead of the rocket fuel, and it would have still worked. I'd have moved a bit slower, so maybe it would have been annoying and not worth it. Um, but I would have been able to make sure I had enough available for the uh, for the for the, for the blast off up in, into uh, back to back to orbit. So yeah, that was a little bit of a shame. But I now do have all the bits and pieces here that I need uh, to get me back up into space and then take me back over to Norbit. 
And so, speaking of Norbit, let's go and have a look at that. What's been going on there? So Tristan has been working on this as well. Um, he's got some train. He's got train parts being brought up. That's nice, I suppose. And he's built a, a ghost of an energy train. Uh, oh, down here. Here it is. Um, so that, that's that's why there always seems there seems to be some uh, stuff missing for in in uh, Norbit. So this is presumably where we're going to put energy science, which is why there's an energy science icon here. Um, and at some point, yeah, we'll we'll move all of the energy science stuff from here down over to down over to here and and set it up a bit more neatly and get a nice. Um, logistics system run up and running here we have some cunning plans for this but i'm not going to spoil those all those ideas yet just yet i'm going to make you make you wait and see what we're going to do there until we do it on stream while we're up here over norvis let's let's drop down to the planet's surface and have a look down there see what's been going on down here uh so the the uh, the most in interesting thing on on uh, mark's list is that he's upgraded the um copper drop station over here to be using copper ingots uh, this was something i was sort of thinking about but didn't say in last week's video and i think a couple of people mentioned it in the comments and they were quite right this is an excellent idea and I'm quite impressed with the way uh, Mark set this up. So having the warehouse just unloading straight into these assembly machines and having them dump out onto, the, onto these belts. So we're getting full blue belts coming out of here. It's really quite neat and just looks, yeah, I, li I like it. It, lo it looks good. So this is giving us a massively boosted throughput of the, of, uh, well, massively boosted throughput as the, as the trains come in, like, well, like that, but with copper, <laughs> um, for, the, for the copper supply and, keep, and keeping this up and running. And now, as you can see, the uh, the red circuit factory is running fantastically. Half of it's going in down here, half is going over to the blue factory. We now have 30,000, which is uh, <laughs> very nearly another train load. So we've got a full train in the station. We've got nearly another train load available um, in, in the warehouses. Down here, similarly, we have a full train. And oh, it looks like we are now actually completely caught up on blue circuits. So that's really good. We've got how many train loads that is one two three there's about four tra four train loads and a fifth one in in the train so that's going nicely uh, and that means all of the red circuits are being made can be poured over here and there we go that's another train load available there that's going so that's going well um the problem with this is it's put rather a lot of strain on the copper uh, supply as you can probably imagine so if we look over here you can see that now we don't have enough copper ingots coming through to keep the uh, keep the train satisfied and that's despite this belt flow these these belts flowing fairly nicely up there so whilst we now have lots and lots of copper plates available all of a sudden we don't have any copper ingots so <clears throat> further expansion may be required or we might just go stop being so greedy down there with the circuits we'll uh, we'll fill, we'll top you up as we as and when we can um but yeah the system up here is all running very very nicely we've got plenty of pyroflux we've got plenty of copper ore we just don't have quite the level of throughput that we're getting that we need in order to keep this insatiable system happy uh I guess we didn't really, we didn't really have a feel for just how much copper was going to be transported over there when the, once the train started running. But never mind, it's it's probably going to be all right. Probably, you know, you, you know what Factoria is like. There's always going to be a shortage of something somewhere. Iron is having similar issues, I think, or at least it was last time I looked. So oh, no, actually, we've got the these are now about half full. So maybe we're uh, maybe we actually we seem to be catching up with the iron. The iron is fl flowing through quite nicely. Uh, we've got it, we've got it building up. So. Uh, Yes, we'll, we are we are generating it faster than we're using it. Apparently, we are happily loading up the stations. We've got a we've got slightly less than half full warehouses, so I think that's going going fairly well. And we can see we can get a better view of how all of the uh, all of the supplies are going by having a quick look at the uh, the, the um, su supply meter over here. As you can see, as I was saying, the iron uh, iron belts are uh, sorry iron iron plates are a bit less than half. Uh, copper ingots are very very low indeed, basically empty. Uh, is that one? That's iron ingots, I think, um, are about 50%, so they could be better. Steel ingots, about 50%. Actually, all these ones are bang on 50%. I suspect this might be just because there's less, uh, the numbers aren't set correctly, because you can only fit half as many ingots as you can plates. They just turn into 10 times as many. Uh, Tristan's also added circuits and belts onto the um, on, on, onto the inventory of Tron. So you can see we're a little bit short of red. We've got a decent number of green. Uh, we've got a decent reasonable number of blue. Um, the blues were full though, so again, that's another one that has the numbers wrong. And the belts are generally okay, although we're a little bit short of the blues. So yeah, we seem to be mostly okay on supplies, except for the copper ingots that are a little bit... Um, are struggling a little bit, should we say? Tristan has also he's been around in the last video. I talked about how uh, these these station these uh, mines up here, here, for example, weren't linked in properly. Tristan says he's gone around putting in all of these cables. Um, 
except for here where there's a bit of a mess because the mine is but the mine overlaps the um the railway line so he hasn't done that one uh, but but in general we've got all of the cables coming up here and now this one's linked into the station so we actually know on the on the main network how much iron ore we have 210,000 apparently and that's why the, so that's why the display is able to show that we have a suitable amount of it now <laughs> that's working that's working properly um it, that wasn't related to how well the system the train system flows for getting the supplies around that's just this is just for our curiosity and also if if we then want to do any sort of um prioritization of the various different trains we can do that through this through this network as well all right so we also had a minor emergency down here in the in the southwest corner we had the um the, the biters over here came over and investigated this this wall uh, tristan managed to repair it by bringing down so mark had built up a construction train which had which had a robot port in it and was able to do building from the train which is quite handy i, I didn't get any footage of that though which is a shame uh, but just so presumably he parked it about here was then able to build all of this stuff out trundled the train out here and then seriously increased the defenses along here so i think these um these these banks of lasers should be more than capable of getting rid of any uh, any biters that come over to have a look around at, 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 at the over here now remember we're not we're not actually releasing any pollution over here so the biters aren't attacking they're just occasionally getting a little bit bored and going for a wander and a bit of an explore and sometimes that takes them within range of the walls and then they decide they don't like the walls very much so they go and attack them so we only get the small attacks <clears throat> which is why before sort of about 10 turrets across here was sufficient to hold the whole wall just about um but we've we've had to upgrade it a little bit basically is what i'm saying here and I think that neatly covers everything that's been going on on Norvis. So I notice I'm not yet at half an hour on the recording. So I think I shall go off and, and have a have a, a, a quick word about another planet. So the next one, to, the next one to have a look at is probably going to be Big Rid, and this is where Marcus headed out to. So if we see, just follow the uh, follow the um, the route out out out, out into space. You get to Big Rid first. So we'll have a look at this one so mark has come out here as, as the for the next uh, the next resource which is vitamelange so as usual he slapped down a, um, a core mining drill got the vitamelange cores coming out here going into pulverizers over here and as you can see on the diagram we then crush those down as usual into stone and core chunks and then he's passing up the pulver the the uh, vitamelange straight out of there into another pulverizer and then the crushed vitamelange is that crushed vitamelange uh, vitamelange nuggets out of here up this way and then he's got stone and of all things wood to get rid of so vi crushing vitamin lunge down produces wood goodness knows what he's going to do with that um, that can then be passed onwards up here for the rest of the stages where we've got things like this one that bring in that require sand and uh, vitamin lunge nuggets and water in order to make what's this vitamin lunge bloom lovely uh, so that's going to be passed through uh, I, I, I guess he's going to be getting he's going to be getting at least some of the um, sand from the stone that comes through here we'll find out whether it's a net positive or a net negative on the on the stone production i suspect it's going to be a net negative and he's going to need it to be shipped in which is why i've been setting up some extra uh, delivery cannons on agnea because i think he's probably going to want it although that said this planet does have some stone on it i think uh, i don't see any right now but I was under the impression that it did have some... Oh, there's a patch. There's 10 million there. That should keep him going for a while. And another 1.5 million there. So I think he should be okay for stone. Plus 13 million. Yeah, okay. There is there's lots of stone. It was just it was just a little bit camouflaged because of the colour. <laughs> I think he's going to have... I think he's going to have enough stone to keep him busy, uh, but if he wants, I can still ship more stone out, to, more sand out to him by delivery cannon, um, because I've got it, and you know I feel like I might as well. But yeah, there's enough here to get, get him, certainly to get him started, and it's inside the perimeter he's built as well, which is always nice. So that will then produce the, oh, that's so that produces the blooms, which are then passed up along here into into a into a furnace where he can then cook the bloom with vulcanite okay so he's going to need vulcanite to be shipped over to him and that will produce uh, vitamin orange spice vitamin orange extract and methane uh, for fun and profit um, the methane appears to be going into these tanks I presume he'll do something useful with it at some point um, but for now it's just being stored up and well this is obviously this is this is a work in progress at this point so we'll uh, we shall leave it and wait and see what uh, what mark produces in the next stream so, I think that'll do for an episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you'll uh, find out when the next one comes out. Uh, spoilers, the next one will be tomorrow when we'll see the other half of what's been going on in the last stream. Uh, what day is it? So, right, so um, I'm afraid there won't be any uh, streams next week because I'm going to be on holiday. However, if you come along on um, Thursday, there should be a GTA video anyway. Uh, next weekend there won't be anything but then the week after that we'll get back into the normal the normal pattern and the normal all the normal uh, videos and streams and everything coming out as usual so yeah there'll, there'll be pl plenty plenty more stuff on the channel to come and see later 
So I hope you, I say, hope you've enjoyed the video, and we'll see you around for the next thing. Uh, please check out the channel sponsor, Treefor.be. We'll uh, we'll run a, a Factorio or a Minecraft or various other uh, host a server host for you at a very reasonable price. And if you use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, you'll get an additional twenty percent off. Uh, so as ever, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.